As 2011 comes to a close, and with the 2012 presidential election less than a year away, voters are beginning to be reminded of the many foreign policy failures of President Obama. From the abrupt U.S. withdrawal from Iraq, which appears to have ignited a rash of violence, to the administration's indecisive approach in addressing the nuclear crisis in Iran. One thing is clear. This White House does not appear to have a handle on what it takes to create a successful foreign policy strategy. And all of these missteps by the president on the world stage have apparently emboldened the regime in Iran because yet again today we heard threats from Tehran that any additional sanctions on its oil shipments would result in the Iranian Navy closing the Strait of Hormuz, a major oil transportation route. Joining me now with the latest on this very serious threat to our national security is former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations and Fox News contributor John Bolton. Uh, John, this saber-rattling from Iran is, uh, is merely a taste of how things are going to go if they actually do succeed in going nuclear, isn't it? Well, exactly. I think this is largely a bluff. I think the uh, Iranian military knows that if they actually tried to close the Straits of Hormuz, they would find their navy on the bottom of the sea in two or three days and suffer substantial additional damage to their air defenses and to their air force. So I think you have to see this in the context of their concern about a military strike against their nuclear weapons program and less as a concern about economic sanctions. But uh, in a sense, psychologically, uh, things have deteriorated over the, over the last uh, three years or so. Much of the world accepts the fact that Iran is going nuclear uh, and that for whatever reason we lack the will to prevent it. No, I think that's exactly right. I think the Iranians see a very weak president in Washington, somebody that they do not believe will use military force against the program. So this threat, I think, uh, given the the uh, economy and, and the impact that a cutoff of oil or a dramatic spike in prices would have. They're trying to intimidate the Obama White House. They're also trying to intimidate our European friends, many in Germany and Italy, for example, who don't want stricter sanctions anyway. And, and meanwhile, uh, across the border in Iraq, uh, 20 minutes after the United States uh, withdraws from Iraq, it's, it's party time there again. They're, they're blowing stuff up. Uh, they feel emboldened that uh, the United States is not, it, it cannot politically uh, step back in uh, to Iraq and that it's now up to them to, to thrash it out. What message does that send to the broader Middle East? Well, it sent a terrible message. This withdrawal of American forces was a catastrophic move by President Obama. Uh, it's already, as you rightly say, having uh, effects inside Iraq, all of them negative from the U.S. perspective. It sends a signal of weakness to Iran. Uh, it worries our Arab friends on the Arabian Peninsula. It worries uh, Israel, and in fact, it should worry just about everybody because of the uh, broader implications for a second Obama term if he's reelected. You coined a phrase to describe uh, this president. You called him a post-American president in his view of the world. And, and uh, in, in the presidential palaces uh, around the planet, people seem to have taken that to heart. In a sense, they're, uh, whether consciously or not, they're adjusting to a post-American world. Well, precisely. They see a weak president. They see somebody who really doesn't care that much about foreign policy, not that concerned with challenges abroad. The first American president since Franklin Roosevelt uh, to move in that direction. And they have recalibrated their uh, challenges. And I think the pace and the scope of those challenges will pick up in a second term. The only answer Obama has is that Navy uh, SEAL Team 6 killed Osama bin Laden. That, that's not a foreign policy. That's something that 99.9% Ninety-nine percent of the American people would have done if they had been able to give that order. So I think the president's weakness on foreign policy uh, is now coming to the fore. Better late than never, I suppose, is a campaign issue. I think it's terribly important that we elect a real commander-in-chief next November. But if you were in Beijing, uh, if you were in Moscow, uh, if you were in Tehran, uh, you'd be figuring a, a, an Obama second term, and by the end of that, you'd pretty much have the run of the planet, or at least your region. 
Well, that or if you're worried that maybe Obama is not going to get a second term, that argues to uh, make your challenges now uh, to take advantage of the weakness. That's why I think the debate on the Republican side is so important and why when, when I see I have to be candid, a candidate like Ron Paul, whose foreign policy is, if anything, worse than the Obama administration, uh, apparently leading in Iowa, according to some polls, it just gives me great concern. Doesn't that, though, get to the heart of uh, the concern on the right, that we have the, the world's greatest military, we're responsible for 43% of planetary military expenditure, we can go in there, we can topple the regime, uh, but we lack the strategic clarity to enforce our will on these nations. And we shall so shortly see in Afghanistan, after an American retreat, uh, the same thing we see after the uh, American withdrawal in Iraq. That's the critique from the right. Well, I think we don't have strategic purpose anymore. I think the president lacks that clarity, and that's one reason why I've uh, argued before we need more of a debate in this presidential contest on foreign policy. We have not had enough on the Republican side, and as the president's weakness goes ever more apparent internationally, I think voters need to know what their alternatives are. And what would you say uh, in terms of where the debate is then? Because obviously, as, as you said, uh, in Iowa, it looks like they're, they're going to uh, vote by quite an impressive margin uh, for, for a guy who is in favor of a 19th century isolationist republic that stays aloof from the world's quarrels. Well, you know, we've got six days to go, and the way this race has gone, almost anything can happen. But I guess I'd say to people who look at Ron Paul and have some measure of uh, support for his domestic policies on the libertarian side, I'd have to say, look, I'd consider myself pretty libertarian, but you cannot live in fantasy land. The rest of the world uh, is not going to leave us alone, and we need a commander-in-chief who understands that. A Ron Paul president would simply not address the challenges we face. So if you're thinking about Ron Paul because of his domestic uh, issues, think again and look at virtually any of the other candidates and consider uh, how they would be as commander-in-chief. That's the president's first duty, defending the country.